For me, there's three main parts to aggressive rollerblading that keeps me coming back for more and they're all equally as important to each other. I wanted to see if it's the same for you guys or if you don't aggressive skate, this would be a good reason to tell you why you should. And while I'm talking through that, I also want to run you through the behind the scenes and all the attempts I did to recreate my first ever edit because I think it's really important to keep skating open like that to hopefully motivate you and make you feel better about your own skating. The first trick I was trying to do here was just a front unity landing forward. Now that's incredibly unco for me these days. I just automatically land fakie out of any H block trick. This ledge makes it very hard to hit the whole entire thing and it was especially hard to remember to land fakie at the end of it. It's so unco to me now. But this was a really good trick to start with on this journey to recreate the first edit because unities is kind of one of my save tricks. I learned it before Royales and they're definitely a fundamental trick to do for me. The next trick though, so this was my first ever switch up and it gave me a bit more trouble i was going to do a unity to soul the worst part about this is for some reason i got it in my head that it was a unity to soul to forward uh, luckily i accidentally land fakie at one point otherwise i wouldn't have had a clip for the edit so note this out for a moment to write down the clips i need to make for videos so i don't make this mistake i was so lucky that happened anyway while i worked that trick out the first part of the scanning which i would argue is the most important to me the one that i do the most is the solo session. Like you're watching right now, mostly without a camera though, the camera does kind of ruin it, but this is where I go out and just mentally recharge, get some exercise, and uh, it is so important. It's the one that really helps me just leave everything behind and just get away from it all and just, you know, skate. And it's a huge part of my overall skating and it's a huge part of my mental health, I think. And it's arguably to me, the most valuable part of being an aggressive skater. There's just something about just being there by yourself, headphones in, maybe no headphones in, just in the moment, forgetting about everything else, focusing on skating and trying to land something, you know, it's got so much value to me. And this category is completely separate to all the others for that reason. It's just a solo recharge for myself. The next trick I was trying here though, was just simple soul to three out and soul to 540 out. I was pretty worried about this trick because uh, I don't 540 out of things anymore. I used to try 540 out of everything, now I don't. And I think that's come back to me switching to flat. I think I used to spin a lot off my switch H block foot and that like, you can slide on the anti rocker quite well and you can slide in a freestyle frame quite nice. But once you get to a flat frame, you definitely, it's weird to spin off. And you can hear when I land this, there's definitely a bit of a squeak of that wheel, which uh, does tend to throw me off axis, which is probably why I don't do it on ledge too much but I did manage to get it, which I was hyped about. This was probably the one of the tricks in here I was most worried about not being able to do anymore. And it didn't take too much effort, luckily. And while we're still doing the spins, the next one was a spin over the pyramid. Now, luckily we have a tabletop at the park here, my local. It's way smaller, way easier, but it's close enough. And I did contemplate spinning it the same way I did in the original edit, but uh, I'm pretty sure I'd definitely break my back. Like, so I would pull something in my back if I spun like that. And it got me thinking about the fact that I don't remember the point in time where I decided to stop spinning with my legs straight down, when I decided to tuck my legs on a spin. Now I can't not do it and it feels so much safer. And I think overall it's just a whole lot safer to spin with your legs tucked. And if you're not doing that now, I highly encourage you to feel it out. It's, uh, it gives you more air time, it gives you more control of when to start and stop the spin. And uh, it just looks better as well, you know, it makes you look a bit more pro, right? The next part of aggressive skating that's really important to me is the social session. Now you could probably guess what that is, but that's when you go skate with a group of your friends. This is one of the funnest parts of blading. So cool to just hang out with like-minded people, have someone to talk about blading that actually understands it and uh, to build off each other and have energy. I have so much fun skating with Slug, with Young Melly and all the New Zealand boys around here. And it's a huge reason that I keep coming back to blading. You know, it's completely different from the solo session. It charges me up in a completely different way. And in this part of skating, I feel like this is where I land my best tricks. Tricks that surprise me. Tricks that I don't think I would ever do without being around the, my friends. You know, like people building off the energy of other people. It's, you can't do that by yourself. And I'm under the impression that this part of aggressive skating is the reason why most people do it. There's a lot of people that this is the only type of aggressive skating they'll do is uh, they'll go out with the boys and skate. They'll never be on their own and they'll never do the other category I'm talking about as well. The next trick I was working on though was grinding a drop ledge. Now, luckily there is a drop ledge I never skate at the local park here. It's way smaller than the one I did in the original edit, which is crazy to think about. But uh, I was very scared of this trick. This little drop ledge off the stairs here is so narrow and so scary and quite long to hold to. All I could picture was like a shin grind across this little narrow box falling down the little three step. 
Uh, but somehow, even with that in my mind, it didn't happen. I managed to get both the tricks here. And I'm very happy with how they came out. It was very fun. But looking back on the original trick, I can definitely tell the reason I'm like, fuck you in it is because I was definitely going for a 540 out. At the time, the homie that was filming me, there was no way he was going to wait for me to actually try land the 540. I think it was like I had that one attempt and he's like, we ain't filming you anymore. One of those vibes. <laughs> so uh, sadly, that was never going to happen. And to this day, I don't think I've ever got that sole 540 off that ledge. Maybe over Christmas when I'm back at that park, I can try it for Instagram or something. And then this is actually the opener for the original edit. It was just a sole down this long square route. And this rail was so long and so square. I don't think anyone's probably ever hit it, the whole thing ever. Maybe a BMXer, maybe a skateboarder actually. I think even now though, if I went back, I wouldn't be able to get it. Anyway, there's no obstacle like that at my local park. The closest thing I could think of was just a flat rail. And since a sole on that would just be way too easy, I decided to do it switch. And I was very happy with how easy it was for me to do it switch. Uh, I need to have more confidence in my switch sole, I think. Hopefully that doesn't backfire. Just to cover my grounds, I decided to also hit the uh, crossing down harbor as well with a sole, casual sole. And that's the one I ended up using in the recreation of the edit because it matched it the most. It's quite different though, which is kind of lame. But you know, overall, it was good. Now the final part of aggressive skating that keeps coming back is the competition skating part or section. Now this is when you're skating at a comp and competing in a competition. Now for me, this is a completely different mindset once again to the other two categories. This is where I'm completely focused. I have all the pressure on me. This is where I have to show the best I can do and really fully express myself and my skating and the best of my abilities under a whole lot of pressure. Now the thrill from this is completely unmatched and it's a huge reason why I keep coming to blading. Landing like the hardest trick you can do in front of like a crowd of people under all that pressure, you know, nothing beats that. It's so nerve wracking and so out of my comfort zone and uh, it's just exhilarating and so much fun. And now as a subcategory of this, I'd say also kind of street skating to film a street edit. It's very similar in the same way with the same kind of exhilaration, but minus the time pressure or the pressure of so many people watching. Each one of those categories is so separate from each other and all hits a different need completely separate from each other, but it's all under the aggressive skating hobby for me. I'm yet to find another hobby that hits every single one. Like I have hobbies that will hit one or two of them, but never all three of them. And that's why aggressive rollerblading has me hooked for what feels like life at this point, you know? And I'd love to know if it's the same for you. And I'm sure if I really dove into it, I could probably think of like 20 different other categories. And I'm probably gonna look at this video and be like, damn it, how did I forget about that one? But that's definitely the three main ones for me now. Three different mindsets, three different things I get back from skating. I wanna give a huge thank you to my patrons, Twitch subs, members, and you for watching right now. And uh, if you want some more voiceover style B-roll videos like this, you should definitely check this video here, right here. It's the last one I did. New format I'm trying out, let me know if it's good. Also, I think I'm going to be live later this week for the first time on YouTube, giving away 50 bucks for the best 180. So uh, maybe turn notifications on. Tell me when to go live.